Welcome to Spirited Conversations number nine. And I have the very special and very exciting opportunity to welcome Philip Dykes to this episode. He is our very first dude to be on the series. But let me tell you a little bit about Philip because I've got a little bit of a, a mediumship crush on both him and his wife at the moment. So I'm just going to read this little bit. But Philip Dykes might be a new name to us in the Southern Hemisphere, but as part of the dynamic duo, Philip and his wife, Carrie McLeod, have just about broken the internet as far as presenting online mediumship courses, demonstrations, and Q&A sessions since lockdown. Superheroes of a new style of COVID era mediumship, Philip is rather famous for his uncanny objective evidence. And I'd say cold hard facts, but that isn't quite right because we're talking about facts that wow in the level of detail for sure, but they aren't cold and they aren't hard either. And if the goal of touching somebody's soul to allow the healing and love from the spirit world to do its magic is the goal of mediumship, then Philip Dykes has that and all of that and a bag of chips as well. So I came across Philip at the start of lockdown four months ago now, uh, when my world filled with grief over the loss of my fur child and doggy friend, Bruce. And like so many others experiencing loss, we often turn to mediumship for soul nourishment and reassurance that the ones that we loved and that have passed do live on. So Philip and Kerry were guest mediums at an online spiritual service called The Gathering hosted by the wonderful Sandra Champlain, who's also been interviewed on spiritual, uh, Spirited Conversations. But uh, that was where I got to witness their superpower and your superpower, Phil. So I want to thank you so much for being part of Spirited Conversations. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you, Denise. I'm still waiting for the superhero to come out with a bag of chips, but there, there we go. <laughs> and it's extraordinary that I'm the first dude, as you said, to come on here as well. I wondered about that. Yeah, you are the first guy. Um, it, it is a female dominated area, isn't it? But the men do shine. We do, we do. We, we've got mm. to keep up appearances. We've got to keep that equal balance, as we say. But yes. no, it, it is a it is an industry where predominantly it is mostly women that are mm. working. So again, rightly so, and some absolutely fantastic mediums out there as well. Mm. And and you yourself and and. Kerry are included. So I know that we both share the privilege of having Mr. Paul Jacobs as our tutor, uh, yes. and he, he's a legend in his own right. Um, but he's the master of objective evidence too, and, and it's the kind of wow factor evidence that, that really does turn your head if you've ever seen him work. Um, and I know it kind of tends to blow the mind of even the hardest skeptic but you have that ability as well. What would you say that, that, that your mindset, like what kind of mind is able to get that amazing kind of evidence? Um, I've got to be honest, any kind of mind can do it. We've just got to actually look at it in the way that it needs to be. Like I said, there's some fantastic mediums out there and potential of people coming through the ranks, if you will. Mm. And what our job is to get them to look at things in a different way. It's not just information to pass on. It's what is this information telling us? And it was Paul, like you said, the master, the legend of it, that taught me very, very early on at a week at Stansted. And actually, that the first few days, people said, when you get to Wednesday, it's going to be the crying day, the tear yes. day. And I'm Weepy oh, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's all that about? It got to Teary Tuesday, and I was floods of tears, my mediumship broken. But actually, and it, it took me several months to actually get my head around what Paul had done. I understood what he taught me. But actually grasping it made a huge difference. And the way that the mindset has to be is you have to look at what you've got. What is it the spirit world is actually telling you and what is behind it and where can we go with this? So you've got to have a challenging mind. I've heard people say that you've got to be intelligent and everything else. But let's be honest, I'm not the most intelligent yeah. in the world. Um, but you've got to be able to look at things from outside the box. What would it be like to have somebody stood behind a window 
talking to you. You can see the mouth moving, but what they're saying to you. And again, you've got to engage and put yourself there. What is it they're trying to bring across? Put yourself in their mindset, put yourself in their life. Then it usually opens up into a whole new ball game of what they're talking about, where they're taking the evidence, where you're going with it. And you've got to understand as well that it's their life, their evidence, their way of putting it across. So you've got to put everything about you to one side, trust, follow, and that very famous word of surrender to them. Because they're real people, aren't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you're in a very privileged place of telling the story of their life to their loved ones in the way that they want to. And this is why we do a lot of teaching going through the emotional places to help people follow that story. Those breadcrumbs, as Kerry says, we're picking them up as we move along. But it is a very responsible place and a privilege to be. Um, and I always remember one of the first demonstrations I did, and it was a little church called Farmworth near Manchester. Um, and I remember going in and the president said, where's your tie? And I thought, oh, no, I'm in trouble. And I said, it's my first service. Please forgive me. But I don't re remember it just for that. The first contact was her mother. And she was a Welsh medium, very well-known medium. And all I heard was the spirit world say, you will never stand and represent the spirit world again without a tie. And I always remember that. So it's all about responsibility, about respectful, being that ambassador for the spirit world uh, as well. So uh, again, the responsibility of being the medium and getting the words right and understand that mediumship is for healing, not for entertainment purposes. Mm. Uh, and you're giving words of comfort that can inspire somebody. You're not advising them, you're not telling them, but you're bringing a love of truth through that will inspire them to make their own choices. And having that responsibility is quite overwhelming. And I always worry, or used to worry about when I went to the spirit world, is there gonna be a long line of people behind waiting for me to say, you got that wrong, son, you didn't do well here. But actually that was the importance of knowing knowing that we're dealing with living people, their stories, their lives, and, and passing that information to their loved ones. So it's really important yeah. that we have that mindset of they are real. They are real and, and to give it in the way that they want to say it in the style. So if they are uh, forthright and straightforward, then that's the way they are. If they might have had colourful language, I know we can't do that, but you can imply that and, and give right. the essence of them as well. So I have seen you demonstrate a few times now, and I, I am still blown away by the detail and the, the level of objective evidence that you give. And I know many mediums would be curious to know, well, how is it? You know, like, what could you say to inspire a budding medium right now? Um, I would actually say to them to really trust what you're given. Don't swap, don't change that information, don't play with it, give it as it is, and really look at what you have. If you see something, then you don't just tell what you see, feel into what you see, describe what you see, but try and do it in less words and be profound as you possibly can and understand the intelligence you're working with. That's the real importance. Why would the spirit world show you an aeroplane to give somebody a message that they're gonna fly high or they're flying high? Yeah. We've got to look at, and why am I seeing the pilot in the cockpit? So in other words, I've got a pilot here, because I always remember um, in demonstrations on the gathering, we have possibly at times 500 people watching. So with 500 recipients, I've got to get to one person in the quickest time. So following and trusting the spirit world is absolutely key in what they give you but looking at that intelligence what have i got how can i put this together in less words to be as direct as i possibly can to make less statements and i know some people can say well it seems cold but actually that we've got to look at mediumship in its own right um when we're demonstrating to a theater and you can't see the back it's got to be hard evidence that gets to that one person that sat in the dark at the back that will put the hand up and acknowledge. And it's the same with the computer screen. We can't see anybody on the gathering. So we've got to get that cold, hard evidence or factual evidence, we'll use the correct term, to get to that one person very quickly. And we can do it within one, two, maybe three statements. Then once we're there, then we get all the personality, all the character, the presence of them, the emotion of them. 
and that's what we do so again if we follow and trust the spirit world in what they're giving us and not complaining saying well i don't want that it's not good enough if we look at what we've got actually it's strong enough and we understand it fully we can make profound statements even from the most generic things if we look behind something and i remember there's a contact quite recently uh, and it was a um, secret service guy and, and he was oh yeah bringing I love up that. all these secrets and everything in the <laughs> middle of the contact it was said but my family was important and it stunned me for a second and i thought to myself that's a big statement in the middle of all this hard evidence and I just paused for a second and I thought, I can't just come out with a statement like that. I've got to understand this. So I took myself into it and very quickly I thought, I'm in these places that are isolated. My life's in danger. This is what got him through. So the, the next part was basically a statement. I said, I know family was important to him and there was silence. And I just said, because I know it was his family that got him through these situations where his life was threatened. And that made perfect sense to the recipient, but also brought them comfort because he was never at home. He was always away. So yeah. again, even in the most generic or the most hard facts, there's lots more behind there. And even all the information comes with feelings as well. So again, yeah. we've just got to be in the moment, in the essence, uh, and really put across what we feel and how we're impressed. So my words to somebody that's wanting to improve or raise their own mediumship will be to surrender completely to the spirit world and get past the no's when you get them they're not important they're a new opportunity of learning we actually actually we want no's to go further into it um, and once we put ourselves to one side and and we get that confidence that's where we really trust that's where the mediumship really flourishes so again if we can inspire somebody to say let's be strong let's be brave let's go for this and let's make mistakes that's the best thing because we get past ourselves we get past those little hurdles of whatever get something wrong what are people are going to say all these little triggers we have through life that get punched and kicked at times uh, and nudged when we're working all of a sudden we let go of them we become that ambassador we come blended with the spirit world we become the communicator and we forget about all our woes or troubles and everything else so my word of inspiration will be to forget self, surrender to the spirit world and just give what needs to be given in the way that they want to give it. I love it. Just get out of your own way, basically. Absolutely. Isn't it? Easier said than done, though, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. And I love that's what I learned from you was a no actually means a new opportunity, which is another way of looking at it, because when you're a beginner medium, you know when you get a no it's like you're stabbed and you're going to bleed out and it's not the case at all is it and i like what you said about objective i said objective evidence but we we mean that the facts the specific information and you guys have been i say you guys i mean you and carrie of course uh, i think spearheading the whole um change of online mediumship you know where there just isn't the time to faff about when you're online and you know we've all had to go online through lockdown and COVID but I sort of think that you and Kerry have been at the forefront of introducing a, a more um, straightforward sharper faster way of, of being online as a medium. I, th I think, um, I mean, the unique thing about myself and Kerry, we, we love what we do and we're very passionate about it and we love to demonstrate and teach and everything else. But we, we like to discuss things and it, even when demonstrations go well, we can always find something that we need to improve. So we looked at the demonstrations, we looked at the first few uh, and we thought these areas need to be polished up, need to be improved. Mm -hmm. How can we do that? And we started to look at it like a theatre demonstration. And that theatre is so big, you can't see the person at the back because they're sat in the dark. Yeah. And clairvoyance, clairaudience, and this is where we have to look at the demonstrating medium, where it's a case of we've got to understand how to reach that person. And it is through those objective facts, the ones that hit hard, that can't be denied. So we, we basically sat and said we need to build that power even stronger. And what we realized that it, it, it's even different than a theater because it's you in the spirit world really and we're looking at a tv screen like i am now mm. so it's that real blend with you and trusting and working as that team 
as you always would in a church, but it's different. You've got to hold the power. There's a delay when you present yeah. your information. Then you've got to wait for the person coming in. So you're holding that power longer and longer. An actual fact is doing you the best, um, grateful, most wonderful thing because you're blending even more with the spirit world as you hold that power. So I, I, again, you're getting further into the essence of them. So when the person comes on, you want to move, you want, that energy is built and you just want to flow with it and just let it push through you uh, and just release what they've got to say. Um, but again, it, it's almost you want to keep it moving all the time. It's like a little bit like a hot potato. It's like I've got to keep on moving because yeah. you've got to be more animated, animated. I get that word out one day correctly, um, <laughs> animated. Um, because there's 50% more energy used because you, you've got to be more alive on screen. You've got to present on screen. You, it's not like a church your clear sentence can take in. You've got that time to work through all the feelings. It's yes. done within those few moments. So it's a completely different beast or animal that we're working with on Zoom. So you have to hold, you have to blend with the spirit world. You have to get to know that communicator in those first few seconds. And in like and 30 seconds or a minute at the most. So the time's reduced, isn't it? We don't have time to yes. mess around. Yes. And we're competing with puppy videos and TikTok and popping up notifications which we wouldn't be in a church you know they're more like a captive audience in the church aren't they but more yeah inspiration. yeah we look we looked at it um the average person has an 8.5 second interest online when they're looking at a website when they're on zoom if it doesn't capture them straight away and, and this is another factor we looked at this is why you've got to be more animated you've got to present you've got to be bang 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 um with your evidence to keep people engaged the more information we throw out, more people come into it, it's harder to sort out. So again, being um, precise uh, uh, and as profound as you can be makes a huge difference, but it's getting that across into your mediumship. So again, sitting every day is vitally important for your mediumship, also for your spirituality, but also for that power as well, um, to keep it moving, to keep it flowing. Mm. And we talked about, you know, lockdown and COVID and, and the gathering, which is where I first saw you. But, but would you say that actually, that like the silver lining out of COVID has been a change in your mediumship? I actually would, because um, it's made us, we've never been, uh, and I'm including Kerry in this as well, hmm. we've never been scared of change. We've never been scared of doing things differently. We've taken part in all kinds of demonstrations, um, experimental demonstrations. Um, we've done experiments for universities. Um, we've always challenged our mediumship. So when um, the churches started to close because of COVID, we st there's part of us that still wants to educate, reach out to people. And we very quickly realized through Zoom, we could do the, exactly the same thing and probably reach more people mm. uh, and not always have the religious side, but just show them the mediumship, what it's about. Yeah. But plant seeds. And I mean, I've heard of, I've, I've actually met people now from all over the world, from religions I never knew of. And they said, well, we're not religious people, but we like what you do. And because it's mm. so laid back and, and, and quite profound in, in the evidence, we, we can understand what it's all about now. So there's more people coming in e each week from different parts of the world that that seed can be planted for them to go away and do their own searching, their own um, education of it and thoughts of it. And that, that's the beauty of spiritualism. That's the beauty of the spiritualization of the self. It's that self growth. So uh, again, we quickly realized that we could reach so many people, but it was new, it was different. And we thought, mm -hmm. and we, we had a lot of colleagues say, no, it's not meant for mediumship. You can't really do it properly. Yes. And we thought, what a lot of rubbish can I get on and do this sort of thing okay yeah um, so we, we rise to the challenge I mean for years mm. I worked three years I worked on national radio um on, on different segments of breakfast shows at a drive time things doing contacts uh, and talking about it so again my path hasn't been what we call the normal through the churches even though I've done that yeah. I've had opportunities to be tested I've had opportunities to work with the the general public in different ways for charities for cash for kids on one of the big radio stations that yeah. open my eyes to everyday people that are curious that don't fully understand it and may not want to come in a church mm -hmm. um, so it helps you have a healthy mindset how to 
look at mediumship and understand what it's really for. Because if we look at the, the old pioneers and we read some of the fantastic stories of the contacts that they did and how they improved people's lives, mm. that's what it was about. It was about inspiration, about giving people the strength to take their own steps forward. And in a way, that's what myself and Kerry have looked at and said, this is a new way of reaching people and the spirit world seemed to want it. I mean, the, the clarity we've had from the spirit world in our own sitting where they've spoken to us and said, this is what we want from you. This is where we want you to go. It's like, it's a little bit daunting at times, but again, we've stood up and we've done our best to try and fulfill that um, by putting that word out there. So I, again, it might be a new way of working or a new way of reaching people, but it's still the same story of the spirit world trying to spread the truth, the reality. That we don't die. Correct. Yeah. And there is a life beyond so-called death. And that is not the exclusive domain of spiritualists. It's universal, mm. really, isn't it? Correct. Everyone's Absolutely. got an idea. Or every, every culture you know has a concept of something that happens after we die. Mm. So, That's why we do the program of Let's Talk Mediumship, because mm. it brings people in and people... And it's one thing that I, I really miss. I, I was brought into mediumship, if you will. I walked in the very first church in 2005, and it was a lovely couple called John and Jean Gilbert that, that said, um, come and talk to us anytime you want, any questions. So um, bless them now, John's in the spirit world. Um, but he used to say to me, well, what is it that you're thinking? He never told me a direct answer. He always answered with a question. And it got me thinking, and I missed that. That's one of the reasons we brought it in, because we like to talk, we like to debate, we like to understand other people's perceptions, because we learn from it, but it gives us ideas to say, okay, we could do this, we can look at this and, and, and build on people's thoughts, education, belief, to be better, to inspire, to want them to spread that word, to want them to be better mediums. So again, let's talk mediumship has fallen right into that, because it's just a different way of reaching people. It's free, it's unique, but it, it, it's talking about mediumship and what it, the essence of it's really about and mm. all the different things that are out there, smashing myths and everything with facts and logic. Well, there uh, you go. Yes, a little bit of myth busting. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And, and we're lucky enough to be hosting you in September for two lots of Let's Talk Mediumship as well, which I'm looking forward to. We are too. Yeah. We are too. So it's it, it's um, it, it's a unique opportunity to get to know everybody. Everyone to get to know us as well. Um, and, and I know you're hosting as well, Denise. Yeah. So it, yeah. again, it's just having a platform where people can get together, talk freely in a safe environment, and ask the questions that they may feel daft about. Because some of the questions we get asked in Europe, let's say, they, they, you can see them wanting to ask, and they'll send them on in a little chat privately to us so nobody else sees us yes. but we'll talk about them so uh, again it gives you an opportunity to ask these questions that you may not want to in public or in front of people you can do it discreetly or send them to us prior and then we can just talk about it openly and no one's shoving any dogmas or or, or rules Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. down your throat at all which is what I really and that's about what spiritualism is about too because no one ever tells you what you have to do ever right. the principles right. are just principles um, yeah. yeah, no, I love that too, because I love a good myth bust and some of the questions that, that people ask, they, they make your jaw drop sometimes, you know, because you think, oh my goodness, you know, you're really not allowed to wear jeans when you do a psychic reading and I'm like, <laughs> you know, who knows, but it's great to be able to have a safe place. So I'm looking forward to those two as well. That's coming up in September. And now you touched on this before, and I know this is one of my other questions because we all love a great origin story. We all love to know how we all come to mediumship. And, you know, I think some people think, you know, as mediums, we experience the burning bush or we hear the voice of God and the clouds part and what have you, but it's usually a little bit more mundane than that. So Absolutely. Uh, unless you're going to tell me that, uh, that the clouds did part for you, Philip, I don't really want to hear what you're... <laughs> no, the sea parted for me. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, Again, I've, I've, not, I've not come from a spiritualist family. I come from a, a coal mining Methodist family, um, civil engineers and everything. But as a child, I was aware of the spirit world. And I've, I've talked about this part. How, were you? How, so were again, you? How were you aware of the spirit world? What? Well, at first, I didn't know. Because for me, 
I was a, that child, I was the middle child, I was always the quiet one. I lived in my own world. I was a daydreamer or a dreamer, as my mum mm. said. But I loved to spend time at my grandfather's and grandmother's house. Uh, and their house was an old house with the old fashioned windows with, with, that were stained. And I could see all the lights coming in and it fascinated me. I used to spend hours sat on the stairs just watching the, the, the light go through the windows and mm. later the light through the crystal chandeliers. And, and after a while, um, I thought it was just my imagination where I started to see colours and lights with my grandparents and people that used to come round. So it was in the beginning, I just thought it's just my eyes as a child living in my own world. But it was when I started to get that little bit older, it started to still periodically come in. Uh, and it was a case of I was aware of the spirit world, the presence of the spirit world and all these other feelings that somebody else here. Um, when I was that little bit older, I started to see colour quite profoundly. Uh, and I met a medium, and as she walked in, I didn't know she was a medium. She was a friend of my mother's, and she walked in, and it was just this huge green light. And all of a sudden, I just saw parts of her disappear, and I thought, that's really strange. And it worried me, because I was only about 9, 10, mm. maybe 11, something like that. Mm. So I didn't fully understand it. And all, all I remember is her saying to me, boy, don't be worried don't be frightened of what you see and she turned away and I thought it's a really strange thing to say to me and I met her several times and she always came out with similar things but it was a very introverted life that I led it, I lived my life in my dreams in my imagination uh, and even though I had friends I always felt alone I always felt different mm -hmm. and even through my teenage years there was things that uh, friends would say to me and I just know the answer Oh, I'm going to do this. And I was just straight out with everything. I thought, oh, you'll win. You're going to come first. But it's like, what's happening? And people used to tell me to shut up and everything. Yeah. Um, but again, when the, the events happened, everything came true. So there, there was just this precognitive ability I seemed to have. But also um, from a young age as well, um, we used to live in a house that used to be a post office. And we used to hear knocks and bangs and everything. And we used to just put it down to energy and everything else. Mm. And again, though, whenever I was in my bedroom, the activity got stronger. Wow. Every time I went to sleep, things got stronger. And it got to the point, and again, I only found this out in the last few years, my stepfather used to sit on the step outside the door and listen to the conversations. And all this came out, and it was just like, well, why did you never tell me? And they well, said, you were well, talking to the spirit world? Talking to the spirit world. And my duvet used to be bulletproof, because at times you used to sit on the bed, it was straight up my head. Yes, so yes. As, as we do as children, we have yes. all these wonderful imaginations. But all this physicality, these conversations, and the one that stood out is where my mother said to me, well, you never met my dad. He died before you were born. But yet that night, what he was listening to, you were talking to him, you gave his name and everything. And it was a case of, I didn't understand it at the time. Yeah. And people see orbs and things and, and they um, see them on photographs. But I used to have them going through the room. They were like footballs. They were huge. Yeah. But there was communication there was thoughts the like I could hear you behind exactly it. Yes. exactly in everything that's been done with me there's been intelligence even when I've not fully understood it as a child and I've been scared or was worried because it's not natural it's not what my family did they're Methodist preachers um, a, a faith that they, they, they used to every Sunday go and talk to God mm. so when I was in Sunday school I used to be really jealous why can they go and talk to God and I'm in here so I snuck mm. through and peered over and there I saw my stepmother as well um, preaching. And I thought, that's not God, that's my stepmom. So, but yeah. again, it, it's the realisation of the truth. So again, yeah. some fascinating, some things shattered. But again, these early experiences um, lay dormant for years after through my teens. And it was only later in life they started to show again. And all these memories come flooding back. And then I started talking to my dad and my mum about it. And it's, my mum said, um, jokingly, oh, we took you to the doctors. We thought there was something wrong with you. Mm. But again, the doctor they took me to was a spiritualist. And oh. so have you ever considered this? So there's always been a synchronicity through my yeah. childhood. There's always been a synchronicity through my development that I've been given, um, how can I put it, opportunities to work with the public in, in presentation in different ways it's always been a theme from child to who I am now. And, and it's not been the easiest of journeys because I come from a Methodist family. Mm. Don't come from a spiritualist family. So I had to find my own way, bumbled my way through it. I'm very grateful I met Paul Jacobs. Absolutely changed my world completely. Still mm. kept in touch. 
very good friend. Um, and, and even now I can touch base with him if I have any questions. But again, it's one of self-development. But again, I believe that every medium is born, but we have unique abilities and it's that uniqueness we must encourage, then bring the formal training into it. So yes, very early stages where I come into it, not fully understanding it, uh, being worried about it at times because we're brought up by parents, we're brought up by schools, jobs, yes. told to deal with facts. And I think that's probably another way that I use my mediumship. What is the facts here that I'm getting out of this evidence? What can I say from it um, that's different? What are they trying to tell me? And I think that curiosity, that first question of the mindset is also answered in the child where we live in that imagination of what things could be and the possibilities of what we can daydream and create within self to understand what is possible for the spirit world to use. So uh, again, I think the, the early development of the medium, how things develop with you. I mean, some of the things I look back on now, I'm, I'm, I'm still jealous of why does it not happen now as well? Why do I not hear as clearly as I used to do? Where they used to, we used to talk, I used to hear them speak to me like independent voice. It was like mind blowing when I think back and the communications and the things that I saw and the experience of things. And, and even when I looked at this as, a way of life where I really became interested and curious. I remember sitting with a gentleman uh, and he said, I'm going to show you how to meditate, how to sit in the power. And I'm sat there in his house and I'm thinking, this is a bit strange, a bit weird. It's dark room, dim light. I'm thinking one eye open, what's going to happen <laughs> next? But then, and, and, and it was a case of the, there was a little statue of a horse at the side of me and it started to move my eyes open going i can see this moving i'm watching him and he's, he's got one eye oh, oh. watching it as well oh. the next one, his mouth's open and i'm thinking yes that did move then it moved again but some of the some of the things in the early development to get my curiosity and my attention were absolutely amazing mm. um as much as i can see you on the screen denise i used to see the spirit world like that uh, and i used to just mm. describe them then people oh. used to say how wonderful it is to have that ability then it stopped then yeah. something else and so that so it was almost like the spirit world trying to like my early childhood find out the best way to work with me and, and that's what you. the team yeah the, that's what the team's about working out what's the best thing to get through this thick gray skull and the matter that little tiny pea that's inside that's a brain um to actually work for them and serve them in the best way so yeah rambled a little bit but again it, it's it, we're passionate about what we do we love oh, yeah. what we do and, and to have can. these conversations is great. And we can all trace that little Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail back to certain childhood experiences. All of us can. Mm. You know, I, I do believe we can. And if we look back at it now with the 2020 hindsight of adulthood and maybe a spiritualized viewpoint of some kind, we can see those little things that happened you know, from whether it's being scared of the dark and leaping 10 feet from the bedroom door to the bed because you didn't want to... You must have been in the same house as me. <laughs> the monsters. I mean, where my bedroom was, and my bedroom was here, I had a staircase going down and up to the bathroom, uh, and there must have been a 20-foot gap. Some nights yeah. I used to jump straight across yeah. to get to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and the noises and the knocks and the, you know, various things that have happened. I think many of us have that. And that's why I ask, because... We're just ordinary people. And, and often it does, it, it shuts down in teenage years, I think, because we, we want to fit in, we want to blend, we want to blend with the real world. We don't want to blend with the spirit world, we want to blend with the world at large. And then it's only till later that, that it comes knocking on the door again. No. Yeah, it always comes back around. It always, away. Yeah. once it's there in you, it always wakes. And it's down to you what you do with it, how you use it. And, so many different abilities out there or, 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 and different strengths of clairvoyance, clairaudience, but also mm -hmm. mediumship as well. Um, today, I, I meet some people that really fascinate me in the mindsets and how they use the mediumship in healing uh, and they don't want to be seen. They're just behind the scenes doing everything. It's yeah. absolutely marvellous. Because it's not just talk giving messages from the spirit world is mediumship. There's so many other ways to work with spirit as well. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on that because it's not just all about the razzmatazz of the platform work. 
at all. No, definitely not. Definitely not. I mean, I've got the perfect face for radio. I loved it. I, I couldn't be seen. Uh, it was. It was great. Um, I enjoyed it, and it was a new challenge. I, I used to do demonstrations for deaf societies as well, where they, they couldn't hear my word. It was all the sign like that got me used to translators very early mm. uh, as well. Working in different countries, even when we work on the gathering or sometimes on Zoom demonstrations, the technology lets us down, yeah. so we can't see the person or hear the person. So we just get them to put thumbs up, thumbs down, and I saw nod that. And that mm. that goes back to you having to hold the power again right. and you're having to hold the contact with that spirit person and just put them on hold and yes. to keep them there and that gets down to your strength as a medium doesn't it absolutely yeah i mean you hear it in, in the churches please speak to the medium please say yes and no that's not for us to work that's for everybody else in the congregation to be interested and to be involved in we don't need the voice at all so uh, again when kerry's done it i've done it and i'm sure there's other people out there have done it as well when the technology goes down, we can't just say, oh, that's the end of the contact. It, it, it really is about working through it. So that blend you have with the communicator in the essence is vital because you, you don't need the voice. You just need them just to nod or do it any because it's you. Like I said earlier, it's you and the spirit world. Mm. It's not about the responses. It's about you and the spirit world because of you. The spirit world can convince you in your mind as the medium then your job's a lot easier because it's easier to bring across and almost sell to your recipient because you've got that courage, that strength, that belief, confidence in what you've got is correct. If you don't have that, your recipient's just going to go, no, 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 no. That's true. Now, that, absolutely. I might not have used the right words there, but again, it, it's getting people to understand that it is you and the spirit world working together as one. It's your connection. Yeah. yeah, all they want to do is work through you. That's all they want to do is get their words through you. Mm -hmm. And as long as we stay true to their words, don't embellish, don't put on. And it might be the most ridiculous thing you've got to say, as long as we say it in the most responsible way. And we might not think it's, I remember years ago, giving a contact in a circle thinking, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to say this. But I knew who I had and I had to do it. And I fought it for about 10 minutes and I thought, no, I've got to do this stood up and said, I need to come to the lady there. I've got your mother here. She just wants to talk about pineapples. Uh, and we all nearly drowned in her tears. And I thought, oh. what sort? And I talked to her afterwards and she said, my mum's favourite food was pineapple. She had pineapples. Everywhere she went, she bought a pineapple. And I thought, that's strange. She said, no, she used to buy a little miniature ones, a little bit. It was just, and she said, we agreed from my mother when she passed that the code word would be pineapple. Oh. Thought, okay. So again, oh. the silliest things that can happen or be given you must give you must go with it and in that moment try and understand what it is it taught me a valuable lesson really did it's not for us to judge is it correct correct pineapple because i was just about to ask you what was the most ridiculous thing and you've already told me so no i've, I've given more ridiculous things than that <laughs> i can imagine we've probably got three hours to, to go through but look the thing i want to ask you now is you mentioned that you've taken part in uh, university experiments and university studies so what's it like being a lab rat a mediumship lab rat the very first experience was an eye-opener I'll come to that the last one I did I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed and I entered into it in, in the fullest of respect and integrity even when I walked into the Stafford Centre where it was taking place um, which is in um, near Birmingham the Midlands near where Paul was from. Um, the this, the, the um, lecturer, the professor said to me, he said, this is what it's gonna be. And I went, no, 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 do not tell me nothing. I want yeah. to know nothing of what the experiment, and he says, are you sure? And I said, absolutely. Take me in a room, lock me away, do what you need to do respectfully. I said, but at the end of the day, I want this to be natural. I want this to show the intelligence of the spirit world. But most of all, I want to test me. I want to look at me, my mediumship. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, there's a video out there somewhere where it shows that where I've got the blindfold on because nobody's allowed to speak to me. There's only the professor oh. that, and people would hold up. It was like bingo, it was like cards, yes, no, and all, everything. Oh, yeah. And so he would take the responses. But the funny thing was in some of the contacts, I gave numbers first and I thought, this is like spirit bingo. And yeah. then afterward, it was a case of, um people would say well, just before they put the card up to say no i'd say oh stop i've got that wrong and i changed it and then the card went to yes Ooh, so to be okay. right but again you never knew if anyone was there so when they said take the blindfold off at the end 
it was like, no, I'll keep it on. I've never seen as many people. So it was done live in front of an audience. Right. But that video shows me where I was facing the audience at one point, but because I lost my sense of direction, and when I move, I dance a little bit. It's almost like I have my back to them and I start, I'm talking to the wall, all, all these funny things. <laughs> but it was, it was marvellous. I enjoyed it. I really did because the spirit world showed me in that instant how they could work with me with no voice, no vision, still go direct because I was to the point of I can go to the, a lady at the back over here. I know she's on the second from the end row or on the back or whichever. Uh, and I've got this number. Uh, and all you would hear was yes, no, uh, and sometimes you, you say, I'd stop, I need to replace that, no, that's a yeah. yes. And it, so it's, it was all about how the numbers came out, but I had no idea about that. So yeah. in a university, I think it was Southampton, the computer had turned the um, numbers out in a locked room with one person in, and we only knew each who sat with the paperwork. Then the demonstration mm -hmm. took place. Um, then the, the experiment was to challenge the intelligence to see if the people came out in the numbers because I didn't know people had numbers on the seats. Right. Um, and I'm not aware of how it went yet because I know there's still experiments going on in different areas with other mediums. I know they struggled with some of the mediums. Some of them that were there pulled out and said, we want no part of that. Yeah, um, right. but, but again, there's some that's taken up that, taken up that challenge. I enjoyed that, but the first one I didn't. The first one was horrific. I was very new. I was very um, naive to everything. And it all started when a gentleman came to me for a reading. And, and when we're new, we panic. We worry about things. What are they going to think? Am I going to oh. be good enough? All these things yeah. that happen. So and, and in came this gentleman that looked like a headmaster, looked really intelligent, full suit. And I'm thinking, OK, there's me and my jeans and a T-shirt. OK, OK, you're in my house anyway. So here we go. Uh, and I, do, I always remember the contact because I said, you're here to challenge me or sorry, test me. I said, and your father's in the spirit world. He was working me and it just went. And at the end, he mm -hmm. laughed and just said, I am here to test you. I was here to challenge you but I now want to ask you something. Would you be interested in taking a, a, a scientific experiment with your mediumship? And I said, yes, absolutely, mm. being naive. Mm. So we're taken down the road a few months later to a spiritualist church I've never been to because I was new then. I was just, just coming into the world as that medium, um, learning my trade. Paul had said to me, go out and be your own medium now. So I was walking the boards by myself, yes. making the mistakes, tripping and falling, learning from it. And I walked into um, Stockport SNU Church and I just saw all these well-known mediums from my area and all the faces went, what's he oh. doing there? Oh no, I thought, this is not going to go well. Frosty. You could feel everything and I thought, and I started to, hello, how are you? Sort of thing, really polite and try, try and get them on side. But we all, they all just sat there and we were given a piece of paper, not allowed to talk, so it was sort of feeling uncomfortable. Mm. We were all led to individual rooms and in the rooms was like a white overall you had to put on like you're going into a flight like, like a film and like we're going through now the pandemic sort of yeah, things yeah. you had to put like boiler suit on no pockets everything you were searched phones taken off you video camera on you and you were given an item so it was psychology uh, psychometry. psychometry and we had so we had to because i actually raised the question after what's the site what's psychometry got to do with the spirit world sort of thing mm -hmm. we said it's just an examination we can measure i said okay so I was given a, a silver tanker uh, and he said, you can look at it and everything. We're taking all the markings off. So I'm looking at it, thinking, okay, it's genuine. It's the, so I started to pick up the emanations of everything. And it, it's really weird because you're under pressure. You, the door's locked. You've got a video camera on you. Uh, and so you know you're being watched and everything. So you, you're just really dictating all these things and going through it. And you're getting no feedback. And for me, it was really alien because I'm in a nervous situation. It's not a very unnatural, yeah. very unnatural, very uneasing in a way, um, because it wasn't friendly or anything. But I understood it why it was done that way now. But afterwards, when we were sat in, we still weren't allowed to talk, we were given a cup of tea, then sent home, and we thought, Oh, that's it. A few weeks later, this huge there was a knock on the door, this huge parcel was given to me like this, just of what I said, and I thought. I can't remember saying all that, but everything was researched, everything was documented, everything was put in order as I give it, and all the evidence that they knew about it was brought in. 
but it was funny how I found out where it had been made, where it had been sold, which family had it, and where the other family they bought it, because they knew the full history of this, uh. and which family it was attached to in London, royalty and all the rest. So it was really well done. But when you read it, it was like sleeping material. You thought there was that much of it full of, but it opened my eyes to there's much more here and there's much more we can do. We hear the stories of the pioneers like Leslie Flint being um, tested, tested. And, mm. uh, and put through all these things and probably the most tested medium that we know of. It, he had coloured dye in his mouth. He was gown, um, um, what's the word, banded and, and duct tape over his mouth. He was tied up on a floor. And, mm. and you think to yourself, what he went through, it's, it, it, what I went through was nothing compared to him. But it makes you look at mediumship in a different way. It makes you look at it in a logical, rational way, what it can do, how it can be used. Uh, and, and that's what I mean. There's marvellous mediums that work in these conditions for the police, that work for yeah. crimes and scenes and everything. And, and yes. they, they, I've done it a couple of times by accident, uh, walked into that. It's another funny story for another day um, that will make you laugh. But again, it, it, they have a specific job, how their minds work. And yeah. it helped me understand it they've got to have a strong stomach for that kind of work but yeah. these experiments made me really think to myself where I could take my mediumship what could be done with it where it can go uh, and I think it's healthy to challenge yourself so you guys that are watching really challenge yourself stretch your mediumship because at the end of the day unless you do you'll never get to know what it exactly it, it can do where it can take you and how the spirit world can use it Yes. that's the important thing that i got from it and that's where why the I, spirit world. I really enjoy it now yeah where they want to take you to because it's one mm -hmm. thing to go oh I, you know i want to be a psychic detective for example another thing to see well what the spirit world might want you to be something completely different absolutely and if I, I can share a little tiny story without yeah, yeah, yeah go on yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in my early days, I, I, I used to want to get somewhere. I suppose, if I'm really honest, I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be heard. I wanted to be known to be the medium. The more I pushed it, the more it failed. The more it just wasn't happening and I got frustrated. The moment I surrendered and said, you know what, I can't do anything. I'll just go with this. And it wasn't a conscious decision. It was just, it just happened. And the phone never stopped ringing. And yeah. even to where the spirit world said, you're going to get this invite. It will be from Paul. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's my imagination. How much have I had to drink? I'm thinking, no, it's two o'clock in the, in the morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to have coffee. Um, yeah. it, it, and it did. It happened. Paul rang when they said and offered what exactly what they said. And it was like, wow, sort of thing. And, and that's how it is. The spirit world moved you. If you have the true intent and purpose to serve with genuineness, with humility, to humanity um, humanity and the unseen world it's the spirit world that move you they I'm do just, the work absolutely i'm just yeah. a chap from a back street town in lancashire a market town nothing special very quickly traveling doing all kinds of things i never thought i would i dreamed about but never thought i would who would have thought i'm talking to denise in australia about everything sharing Damn, with people down under exactly it's mm. it's it, it, it's a wonderful place to be in the moment you surrender and give to the spirit world that's when they give back that's well, they when, give back yes exactly they move you to where they want you to be and i, I yes. probably shouldn't share this because if, i've not even told kerry when we met sandra champlain the spirit world told me in advance and and said um, this this and this but they also mentioned something about kerry and i've always kept it to myself Oh, you can't keep it now. Because... Exactly. But I, I know I've got to say it now. But they, they said to me that Kerry has worked so hard for everything she's done. And we know that she doesn't want to. She's pushing you, but we'll make her, we'll push her into that limelight. And I smiled and everything. And they said it will be the making of her. And as we all go through, we question why we're doing this. What, what's the intent? Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we get so nervous? Why do we put ourselves in the limelight? Why? It's all about serving the spirit world. And the spirit world knew that whatever's presented in front of her, she would do. And she does, even when she's not the most confident. And same with me. So yeah. I'm not sharing anything personally. About, it's about both of us. We want to serve the spirit world. We want to spread that word. We want to take up that challenge. For me, being a medium isn't just being a spiritualist 
it's bringing change, adapting change, creating inspiration in people, allowing the spirit world to use us to educate, promote, plant a seed that brings inspiration into your lives to be the best person you can be, to be the person you are. That to me is the most beautiful thing. And, and you can probably see these little flowers, plastic flowers here that I bought my little touch to the office. Um, I used to be a gardener for 29 years. Um, but again, as you can see, if they were real, each flower is a medium. Each flower is blooming next to the other one. That's how nature, that's how that divine law mm -hmm. wants it to be. All blooming, all shining. And we must respect every individual that's out there to really shine and be their own flower. In your own way. Yes. yes. Oh, lovely. So now what's in the wind for Mr. Philip Dykes now? And I have to really hold my sense of humour because you talk about wind, we talk about windy pops and everything else. What's in the wind? Well, we've got a couple of um, demonstrations coming up with yourself, Denise. Yes, uh, yes, that's um, true. We've got, a, we've got a workshop as well, sitting mm. in the power room and lots mm. of other workshops and courses online. But for me personally, I'm, I'm craving a creativity at the moment. I want to do something a little bit different. So my soul is working, we're debating, we're thinking, we're talking about creating something, but we don't know yet. We've got a title mm -hmm. for it, but we've got just to put it all together. So there's lots of things there. We're excited. So you're just going to about... tease us now. And... We are, we are, <sighs> we are. We, we've got the demonstrations with you that we're really looking forward to. We've got yes. the Sitting in the Power Workshop as well the course um and that's all in australian course. time so yeah oh, we don't have to get up for am. We're, we're moving to australia times as mm. we're right at the moment it's probably why i look so tired with bags in the mouth we're, we've moved into santa fe new mexico time so at right. the moment i should be sleeping and I'm working later tonight oh, right. um, so that's absolutely fine but again we're doing that because we want to meet people's needs we want to get out there so Again, everything we're doing is making everything more convenient. Mm. We're bringing Let's Talk mediumship in a platform for um, debate and talking and sharing knowledge from us, yourself, uh, and yeah. the general public, people, participants that want to come in. But the, yeah, there's lots. There's We Don't Die. We've got a week yes. course, the Scotland course coming up. Yes. Um, it, it's very successful. We're absolutely really proud of it because we... we took it to the Netherlands then this year because of COVID, it was meant to be in Canada. It, so every, it was all the Scottish coming across to meet everybody and vice versa, all people from Europe. But now we're doing it online with Sandra, so we're gonna get it, everybody from the world. So it, hopefully it gets even bigger. But it's, a, mm. it, it's a, a week of three hour classes that touch base on different aspects of mediumship that give you yeah. a taste of, like a buffet, event. isn't it? A buffet, exactly. You yeah. can pick and choose. You can do all five days or two or one or three. If you do all five, you get a discounted price, I think she's doing. Then we've got a couple of um, full workshops as well, the Accomplished Medium as well. So mm -hmm. that one yeah. is a European one and the Time Suit Australia and New Zealand as well. So, ah. lots of so we'll give those links well. below. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I'll send okay. those links over to you. We can put them on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're looking, we're, we're just, we're hungry for change. We're really wanting to um, do things new. We're, we're looking for that new challenge. And it might come across egotistical, but we don't mean it that way. It's we're just looking for something new. We, we want to reinvent. I mean, COVID's been a horrible, horrible thing to happen to the world. Mm -hmm. In one way, it's but, brought us all closer together. Yeah. And it's created a platform that, everybody everybody out there can be reached and touched in a way and spread the word off so it, it, mm. it's a, it really is an unlimited boundaryless uh, platform to work on to reach people but create new things i mean even in the class last night on we don't die the last one we found a wonderful teaching exercise and we thought oh now we can do that this this and this in the same format that gets everyone involved, all the participants all in one go and question debating and really interactive. Because the last thing I want to do is sit on here talking to you. Because as you can see, I love talking. Okay. I don't really <laughs> talk to but again, we want you to experience, we want you to give you that, that extraordinary experience of development 
but also we want to not just look at your mediumship, we want to look at you, look at the psychology of you, yes. look at what makes you. And, and that's and the really difference that you guys bring to your teaching and your yes. courses and your, even your individual one-on-one -on -one mentoring is that the, you kind of climb in, there's no escape because you climb into my head and, and other colleagues that have also had mentoring sessions with you, they're like, there's no escape because you know exactly what's going on. So that my mediumship has progressed faster because of that. So it, as creepy as that sounds, it's actually really amazing. <laughs> It is, it's unique, but it, it's what mentoring is about. Because is. mentoring is meant to be one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, you have two of us on one, sort of yeah. thing. But we, you, you come to us for training. You come to us. We're not just going to enhance your ability and get you to understand the mechanics and all the formal mm. training. We mm. want to look at that. your mindset. We want to look at the psychology. What issues get in the way? I mean, mm. Kerry is a phenomenal transformational coach. She convinced me so much. She did it with me, and it changed my mm. life. Mm. But I wanted to go and train as well. She, she's got all the diplomas. I'm certificated in it, and, and I've got that level. But I've got an understanding how to yeah. ask a question, how that's to put what, something that really makes you dig deeper and see. That's what makes deeper. you guys different, I think. Absolutely. You know, the cutting edge. So uh, they're definitely hooked. I look forward to um, having you guys your first Australian uh, time zone demonstrations in September. August and September, I should say, August and then September. you're sitting in the power workshops in September. The power is really where it's all at, and you guys are, are going to be able to help us with that. But just finally, and thank you so much for this chat. I know we could probably chat all night or all day for you, but, but what is the spirited conversation you never get sick of talking about? Um, I think the one that is really what we've done, that there's no, there's, for me, there's no separate conversation it, it's about everything everything intrigues me we can talk about the mechanics we can talk about the theory the debate of it we can talk about the understanding of it we can talk about the pioneers for me it's a never-ending story that can be read but it's also fascinating because we can look at it from so many different angles yeah. one of them is the pioneers everyone loves to research and do the history yeah. but actually if we look beyond that and look at the personalities, the characters and the jobs they had, that speaks volumes about it as well. And the personal stories, how they came into it, Albert Best, one of them, where he, he was in the war and in the trenches and, and, and those horrible scenes that he went through and the spirit world firstly spoke to him and got his attention and saved his life. All these things and how he progressed, how he changed as a person, as that world-renowned medium that was flown over um, to royalty and palaces to do readings, yeah. no expert spent, to somebody that said, I've had enough, I'm going to help people heal and, and take that transition to the spirit world in the hospitals. And he used to go and sit with people and bring them peace. For, for, it's just how people, that, that fascinates me. Yeah. So again, it's people's personal stories, um, the, the stories and questioning the stories and, and pulling everything apart, you find so much more. So yeah. again, for me, I've got a mind, I, I'm, we could speak to hours. I mean, we used to sit up till three, four o'clock in the morning and, and laugh at friends and video them when they fell asleep and everything. But because we, we were fascinated by everything. But again, there's no one conversation. Even when we look at Arthur Conan Doyle, when I did a little bit of research, he used to go to the school down the road from me, he used to go to oh. the college and down the road from me as well. So again, all these little synchronicities, um, how um, Gordon was, was in my local area, I never got to meet him, I could have met him, all, all these little things. Yeah. Re so uh, again, it's fascinating that when you start to look at things and question things, because I, I think probably the best thing that I could really say about conversations, a word that's just come in, is challenging your thoughts, questioning your thoughts, question everything you read and do. What's really behind all this? So uh, again, it's having that fascination, that curiosity of mind. So uh, again, I'm probably repeating myself, but it, it, there's no one, I, it, everything. I love listening to people. I love listening to Paul, uh, his yeah. stories. Um, he, he, he's a master. Some of the things he yeah. shared with us over the years, it, 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 it's phenomenal. And he'd sit here in awe and just think. And I remember, and he probably won't thank me for this, we were talking in Berlo in the Netherlands on a course together. 
and he was sharing his wisdom and I got quite emotional because I thought the day he goes to the spirit world all this is lost all this knowledge is lost yes. and he's taught people but he's got so much more to give yeah. he, I got quite and I came home and I said to Kerry I said I, I don't know what happened I got emotional but she said well this is who you are and you've learned so much and you know there's more and it's whetted your appetite you want to know that and, and we still touch base with him we still go to his courses we still do it yeah. because there's always something more we can learn and I, I think and I had it said to me not long ago just before COVID um, you're probably only one of the mediums that turns up to watch other mediums work and I couldn't understand that because from any medium we can learn so much yes. I remember watching Tony Stockwell thinking I like that I like I want that contact uh, and I remember the next demonstration I got it and I thought way but it was even better there was more yes. on it and it okay i know there's more so we can again, the spirit world could dangle that carrot and tease you and i always yeah. remember glenn edwards seeing him my jaw was on the floor i'm thinking that that he was my first experience as a medium and i thought that's mediumship and somebody went it's a bit boring isn't it i thought what you having a laugh that it was, it was incredible but it wasn't fancy entertainment it was just pure lovely emotional objective presence yeah. of the spirit world a factual it was just sublime uh, uh, and they only got to see him once unfortunately then I met Paul and, and it was just like Paul was the icing on the cake it was just and I took Kerry to watch him recently and uh, just before COVID again and she went he doesn't stop does he and I said no uh -huh. and she's like where does it come from it just pours out and it's just she said he's like a steam train it's bump 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 so it, it's fantastic and he's taught some wonderful people he really has and he's had some wonderful experiences so yeah and that probably touches right back on the very first thing we started this whole conversation about was it's probably highlighted why you get the a fantastic evidence that you do the objective the factual the the because that's your mind you yes. know you you're always curious you're always thinking you're always going well how else can this be applied what else what's underneath it what's on top of it let's just get in there and be curious and that's probably why you do get that fantastic yeah, it's, it's just an awareness the more we question the more we feel into things you become aware of different things so i mean we, we all joke don't we? we we say that men can't multitask ladies are fantastic at it we we as the medium we have to learn that and so many different it's like mm. a mind map. there's so many different levels of awareness and so many emotional triggers mental physical everything so again where the spirit world can take us is absolutely sublime and, for, and all we have to do is be curious and look at what we've got and just savor every morsel of evidence it's like that wonderful cadbury's dairy milk chocolate isn't it you put it into your yeah. mouth and it just melts and melts. Rips it. And, and it's savoring everything mm -hmm. and not wanting to bite or swat it's just mm, okay so again that, that that's just how we are as people as mediums well that's gorgeous what a lovely analogy to leave it on uh, to melt in your mouth and savor every bit of evidence and that's probably how the spirit world wants us to work so mr philip dykes thank you so much for being part of spirit of conversations and uh, i look forward to seeing you when you come online to aussie shores thank you so much thank you so much denise it's been a pleasure thank you so much i hope everyone enjoys it <laughs>